So today I wanted to record a video on my skywriting tips for all the skywriting races that I've put on YouTube so far. And many of them you heard me refer to things like the Skyward Flick, which is maximizing Skyward Ascend for speed boosts instead of using Surge. And you'll also notice that I play a lot in first person camera versus third person. I'm going to explain the difference between the two strategies because both are viable. I'm going to show examples of what one is good at versus the other. Let me start with that. I'm going to do this race in third person mode first and explain the advantages and disadvantages of it. The advantages is that you can see more around you. And you can, more importantly, you can see your Drake's animations to tell how fast you're going or when you're coming in or out of a surge. Like uh, this Drake animation specifically, I like this Drake because not only it has low profile, but the wing animation is very telling about when your surge has ended. So when you're on a race where say you're spamming surge, you use the wing animation to tell when they hit the next surge because the wings go in when the surge is active, but as soon as that's ending, the wings flick back out. And that's that, that, that animation of flicking back out that's the cue to hit surge again to maintain your momentum. Because if the wings are out for more than half a second, your speed drastically starts to fall off. So when you're in a, when you're in a sprint, you use the wing animation in third person view to know when to time your surges for maximum efficiency. Because if you spam surge too fast, if you're, if you're clipping your previous surge with your next surge, you're wasting vigor. But if you surge too slow, you lose speed. So you have to know the right time to surge, and that wing animation is very key for doing that. Now, for the purpose of demonstrating that, and using the third-person camera to maximize that, I'm basically going to do this course kind of wrong. I'm going to get a shitty time for it, because I want to show off this, the, the surge animation and surge timing. So I'm basically going to be doing some sprints in a course that's not a sprint. So... With that said, don't judge me at my time because I'm using this course to, to showcase skills versus actually doing the course properly in this first example. And I'm going to do challenge because I don't want any bigger orbs in there. I want to showcase just using the skills. I'm going to pull bigger on the start. Just so I have enough to do the sprint example at the bottom. So I'm basically doing nothing except for coasting all the way down, but configure is maxed. And now I'm going to go into a full sprint using this. Watch the wings. As soon as the wings come back, new surge. I'm using the wings to tell me when to surge. And again, I'm surging upward, and that's like one of the worst things you could do. But I want to showcase what I'm doing here. Like now, basically the sit course is now bricked because I wasted... You don't surge upward, ever. That's the wrong thing to do. You always use Skyward Ascend. But here I showcased how I used the wings to know when to surge. And I maintained the sprint up until I was going upward. And then I started using the wrong... I was using the wrong skill, so I didn't get a good time. Like I said, the point of this wasn't to get a good time. I still almost got gold by five seconds using the wrong skill at the end. You know, the surges at the, surges at the start were perfect. If I used Skyward Ascent at the end, that probably would have been easy gold on the hardest difficulty of this somewhat pain in the ass course. Now I'm going to show the other perspective. Doing it in first person. Now first person, you can't use the wings to tell when your surges are going. And that's a huge caveat here. If you rely on the wings, like I, ju like I just showed you a trick that you can't even do in this perspective. So it's like, well, why would you play in this perspective? Well, this has pros as well. In this perspective, sharp turns are easier to make because when you need to turn quickly or react to something that you weren't expecting to, like let's say uh, there's a fireball in your path and you need to go around it. In this perspective... It's much easier to make corrections or sharp turns than it is in this perspective. 
And that's where this comes in to an advantage. It has another advantage too, which I'm going to go into in the next tip. But first, I just want to show doing the same race in first person. And again, I'm going to do it kind of wrong because I want to re repeat it the same as last time. I'm going to coast all the way down. So here's a sharp turn. And so look how easy that sharp turn is to make in this perspective. Like, I barely move my hand, and I can make sharp movements and navigate this course much easier. I'm going to start my sprint. I don't have the wing animation, but since I usually play this way, I know exactly when to do it. Again, see, look at these sharp turns. I can go up and down, up and down with ease. Now, again, I'm not using Skyward Ascent, so I lost all my speed going up because you're not supposed to surge going upward. That's terrible. I'm going to use one Skyward Ascent here because I won't even finish the race if I don't. But look at, these look at how sharp I can turn. I could go like zoom, 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 zoom. I have such huge turn radius in this perspective, which is very important in some of these courses. That have really nasty turns. Like there's another one in this zone. Up here. That's one of these courses. I forget which. That's this one. The crisscross. The cavern criss crisscross. Do this in third person. And then do it in first person. And there's a night and day difference in difficulty. Because in first person. All the sharp turns. It's literally crisscross. Where it's like. Going like this. Through the caverns. And. It's much easier in first person. Now, I will say this, in first person mode, one thing that's very important, if you have it on, turn off my name. Because if it's on in first person, the entire race, your nameplate is floating in the middle of the screen, bobbing up and down, back and forth. Like the whole time you just have your name, it's just bobbing right here. And it's a huge distraction that's in your way. The next tip. Skyward Ascend, which I call the Skyward Flick, more or less. And that's... The trick is, if you're facing... If your camera's aimed up when you hit Skyward Ascend, you get a boost of speed that's even stronger than Surge Forward. And that's the key to using the Flick to min-max the race to go faster. But first, I'm going to show Skyward Ascend not using the Flick. I'm going to do only two. One to get off the ground, and then I'm going to hit a second one going forward. Barely gaining any speed, just gaining a little height. Not even blue. Not even gaining bigger. I don't have Through All the Skies active at all. That was two Skyward Ascends. I'm going to do the same thing again. Third person. But I'm going to do a flick so I can get the speed boost going straight up, but then immediately flick the camera forward. And carry that momentum forward instead of upward. I'm going to have one to get off the ground. Next, I'm going to flick. I'm going to go up and immediately forward. Look how I'm instantly blue. I have instantly through all the skies and I have much more speed. Again, still only two skyward ascends. Flick and bring the camera forward. Look how much speed I have doing that. Flick forward. Flick the camera up just a second, then forward. I'm maintaining a high amount of speed using only Skyward Ascend and flicking forward. And that's huge, especially for screw-ups, because you can do quick recovery. Like, let's say I'm racing. I get my speed up. Two Skyward Ascends, I'm already going pretty fast. Let's get another one in. I go momentum. And shit, I ran into something. All my speed's gone. Skyward Flick. Another one. I'm quickly back in the blue with two Skyward Ascends. It would take like three surges to do the same thing. And when you run into something, it's very bad. But sometimes you can actually save the race with the Skyward Flick. Because, look, each flick can give you a, a huge increase to speed. Like... And the good thing about this, too, is you can flick. You can change your direction very easily. Oop, I hit something. Shit. Skyward Ascend. 
One more. Back in the blue. That's it. You can always get back in the blue with two Skyward Ascends. Even if you ran into something and came to a full stop and are starting to fall. You're literally falling Skyward once, Skyward twice, back in the blue. Surge can't do that for you. Skyward Ascend is the answer as long as you master the flick. Now I'm going to go back to first person and I'm going to explain where the other huge advantage is here. The flick is way, way easier to do in first person mode. To the point that it's night and day difference. Like, I'm going to take off from the ground. Now, again, I'm going to do two Skyward Ascends. In this perspective, not you in the flick. One more. I got some white winds, but I'm not in the blue. Let me get some of my Vigor back, because I've been using it. Okay, now I need to go back to the full stop. I'm going to go over here. Do the same example again, but I'm going to do... Again, only two, but I'm going to do the flick. In first person. First Skyward Ascend. Now this one. Flick. I'm in the blue instantly. I'm going much faster. And note that the amount of time I spent looking upward was much less in first person mode. Because in this mode, I have a much faster camera control. So in this mode, you can do a flick very quickly. Like, you spend less time going upward and more time going forward and you get this much camera control so now i'm going i'm basically into a sprint now using skyward ascend doing these little mini flicks i'm going really fast using only skyward ascend and not surge and this is especially key when you're doing challenge and challenge reverse because you don't get orbs to replenish vigor and the vigor replenish skill is disabled and if you lose your speed for any reason, you hit something, like, fuck, I hit that wall. Oh no. Skyward flick. Getting back to speed very quickly. I'm way, way away from the course I was testing. And when you make a habit using the flick, then you don't even have to remember switching between Surge and Skyward Ascend when you're going upward because you just do it automatically. You're pretty much always doing it. Let's get back to where I want to be. I flew away from the course I was testing on. I'm not using Surge at all, I'm only using Skyward Flick, because this is honestly the fastest way to travel. You pretty much only use Surge in two situations. When you're going downward. The Skyward Flick downward will work against you, because the, the drastic change in direction, like I'll show you, if I'm going straight down. Skyward Flick. I actually didn't get any speed at all because it was too drastic of a flick. You can't, you can't switch your Skyward Momentum downward. You could switch it straight, but if you, try to, if you try to take that momentum downward, the game actually does take the momentum away. Like, flick forward, easy. Flick downward, see how my, all my speed was just zapped. It literally zapped my speed if I tried flicking downward. You cannot flick downward. It will not let you. So if you're in a course where you have to go downward, then you have to use Surge instead of the Skyward Flick because that's the only one that it's going to let you use. Or you just coast to get bigger. Like sometimes the answer is, especially in challenge courses, pretty much any time you're going downward is to use nothing. As long as you're in the blue and you're getting bigger, Going downward is a good moment to replenish your vigor in the challenge course. And that's the Skyward Flick. 
and one of the main reasons I play in first person, besides being able to have a vastly superior turning radius, it's also easier to perform the flick. It's also easier to, perform, to avoid obstacles, like you can squeeze between things, like from this perspective, easier. Some courses are toxic, like I'm going to go between these branches, between this tree, sharp turn, between the branches, between the branches. When you're playing like this, you can navigate between narrow points. Oh, I'm going to go between these rocks. It's just so much easier to control your dragon in first person. You just lose the ability to rely on your dragon's animations for things like surge, knowing when to hit your next surge. But the thing about dragon racing is you barely use surge anyway. I'm going to go over the other case of example where you, you do use surge. So you use surge to go downward because you can't skyward flick downward. But also there are races, non-challenge races, where you do have bigger orbs. A lot, lots of them. And the goal in some of those is tuned in a way to where you have to maintain maximum speed the entire race. And because it gives you so much vigor, you actually do that better with Surge over Skyward Ascend. Because when you ever do Skyward Ascend, you do slightly go in the wrong direction. Because you have to go up a little bit before going forward. But if you have infinite vigor, then you don't want to go up at all. You want to keep going forward at maximum speed. So like, for example, the Kalendor Cup had a, a race down here. Here, where you're like zooming around. And you have to stay full speed the entire time. In this one, you're basically spamming Surge because you have infinite vigor. And those are pretty much the only two times you use Surge. When you're going down, or when you have a surplus of Vigor, or infinite Vigor even. Any other time, you're using the Skyward Flick. Oh, and one more example. I forgot that there is a third reason to use Surge. And I'm going to show it on this course now. I'm going to do this on Challenge. Now, again, this, this, I'm starting this course going downward to use Surge. Not sc a Skyward Flick here would ruin the race. You start with Surge because you want to get immediately in the blue. Now here you can pull energy. So a sharp turn here. Ultra easy in first person. Pulling energy going down. Skyward flick here. Get some speed. Still pulling a little bit more energy. Here's an example of Surge. I can Surge and go through the fireball because when you're surging, you're immune to hazards. And here, there's a lot of straightaway, so I can surge. Here, you use Skyward Ascend. Surge. Even the fireballs, Skyward Ascend. Always Skyward Ascend going upward. Even if you have an infinite vigor. Skyward Ascend. Surge. Surge. I'm going downward. Skyward Ascend upward. Another Skyward Ascend. That one, which I turn into a flick. To carry the momentum forward, surge, race is over. Now that wasn't a gold time, because I'm a bit rusty, I haven't done this course in over a year. But it was a pretty good time for a first attempt, just to get the lay of the land, and to outline some skills. Now obviously I do some optimizations there, like for one, there was a spot where I did a surge, on, or two surges on purpose to go through fireballs to show that you can, but I should have used two skyward flicks in that area instead, to get my top speed up quicker, because you get more speed from a Skyward Flick, even on a straightaway. That area, I should have been using Skyward Flicks, not Surges. They wanted to outline the advantage of using Surge to immune yourself to hazards. But this video basically demonstrated the skills of mastering these races, especially challenge races, as well as the advantage of going into first person over third person but also the disadvantage of using first person over third person when it comes to using your Drake animation for mo mobility. And these are the things that I'm going to talk about a lot 
my gold cup videos for all the courses in the war within and some of the ones i have up now in my channel hopefully that was helpful and thank you for watching